Hello again, friends, and welcome back to another edition of Takeaway. We are glad you're joining us again for our summer sermon series where we're diving into the Psalms. That's quite a tongue twister. That is a tongue twister. Summer Psalms. Pastor summer Michael Psalms. is here with me yeah. this week, and you will be with me for three of these nine weeks. Yeah. Uh, fasten your seatbelt because we are going to dive into uh, some of the most beautiful words, uh, brightest, mountaintop high, and deepest valley low. The, uh, the Psalms do cover <laughs> the whole gamut yep. of human experience, which is why they're like such a treasure. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and as you guys picked them, you picked them all. You picked the heavy hitters. So uh, we're going to get real with you in the next nine weeks, and, and we're glad you're with us. Uh, I will give you one caveat. Uh, actually, I'm just going to be very transparent with you. We recorded all these in two days, so I don't you will see, as you watch these throughout the weeks, I don't typically wear the same outfit every week. Um, so, but uh, yeah, we, we marathon recorded these uh, for your viewing pleasure, and uh, we just pray that they bless you throughout the summer. So let's go ahead and kick off. Week one, we are diving into God's steadfast love, and you uh, unpack the word steadfast. It's a bit of an unusual word um, throughout your sermon, but uh, what I'm reminded of is is... Well, first of all, love is a verb, and I'm reminded kind of of the golden rule, do unto others, love others as you would want yourself to be loved, uh, and, and that's Jesus' own words from Luke 6, 31. Um, we can't possibly love like God can love, um, but what does it look like in today's world to, first of all, love on those we love, but more importantly, love on those we may not like so much. Well, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head with that simple golden rule, like do unto others what you would have them do to you. Yeah. I got three kids at home, and my oldest is 10. And uh, recently, uh, I found so many times I've said to her, you know, like she'll be upset because brother or sister did this. And I'm like, honey, you got to treat them the way you want to be treated. That's right. Right? Like they're treating you the way I've seen you treat them yeah. and so I know for many of us we want to be treated with dignity yeah. and respect uh, we want to be heard and listened to and and uh, loved and I think just in those small little ways like you know if I want to be treated with dignity and respect that's how I should treat others especially those that maybe I disagree with yeah. that I have a different worldview of that I you know we just see things differently and even if they're hostile to me yeah. my response because I've received God's steadfast love, you know, while I was an enemy and hostile, he loved, he loved me, I do the same. And so if I wanted to be treated with understanding, if I want to be listened to, if I want, you know, to receive kindness, yeah. well, I gotta, I gotta live that out. And that's just a small way to do like that consistent, steadfast love. And it's rooted in the way God has loved, yeah. loved us. Yeah. Um, that's a good point. I think it's important to um, continue to practice. It sounds a little weird, practice yeah. loving people, but um, but practice makes perfect. And, yeah. and the more you do, I, I mean, there's a huge parallel with the importance of being in God's Word regularly, right? Mm. Practice that, being in five minutes, ten minutes a day, whatever whatever you're able to, to do, and, and that's a blessing to you. So you can practice kindness, uh, um, listening, yeah. you know, pull yourself out of your comfort zone, yeah. And uh, and the more you do that, the more regular, the more consistent, the more right. just normal that's going to feel. And wow, what a great person. Yeah. You know, I mean, you think of like any skill. Yeah. You practice that skill yeah. in kindness and listening and respect. Those are those yeah. are uh, outcomes of love. But there's also skills you can you can practice. Yeah. They're not easy. No, not they're easy not. to listen. They don't to, come naturally. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when you're like listening, you're like, don't necessarily agree with somebody or even if they like maybe got something wrong and like, yeah. I, I, I do this all the time. I already prepare my response. So rather than listening, I prepare my response. Yeah, right. It's like, I totally right. missed the boat. Right. So, and then so you're like waiting for them to get yeah, that. Come, so on, come, on, can, come on, let me dive in. Let me get it. But the more you like practice it intentionally, be like, you know what? Nope. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen first and then take a deep breath and respond. 
Yeah. But that, but once you practice it, it does become you more natural. Better. Yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah. For yeah. sure. So as you were developing uh, the sermon for for this particular week, what did God bring to you uh, out of diving into this psalm? Yeah, for this psalm specific, uh, it might be a little weird. Week one to start with one eighteen. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I think the reason it was chosen uh, was because it really speaks to the foundational identity of who God is. Mm. And how he relates to us, and it's in that one phrase, steadfast love. Yeah. Uh, in fact, um, this is going a little deeper than the message. If you go to Exodus 34, mm-hmm. uh, God defines himself to Moses. It's like 34, I think it's verse 6, it's like one of the most important verses in Scripture because God himself defines himself. Yeah. And the very first way he does it, he goes, I'm a God of steadfast love, abounding in mercy, slow or slow to anger, mm-hmm. abounding in steadfast love. Like that's how he defines himself. Yeah. And, um, and so that when that's the refrain of Psalm 118. So that's like what God's people speak into their heart and life over and over, a reminder of like, this is who God is. Yeah. This is how he relates to us in its steadfast love. And that theme or that identity, that way of relating is woven through all of the Psalms, yeah. which is why I think we started with yeah. Psalm 118. That makes a lot of sense. That's fantastic. And, and so take that now and turn it to our viewers. How do we apply 118 to our everyday lives? Yeah, that is a fantastic question, right? These aren't empty words. Right. Uh, they're not just there to be cool, but yeah. to have an impact yeah, yeah. on our lives. And I think it's to... Um, take up the same rhythms that God's people did. Uh, You know, the first four verses, uh, it's almost like this call and response where, you know, uh, the first verse is, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. So the first line, you know, it'd be like, I would say that and people respond. And uh, so you see they actively used steadfast love as the refrain that they would speak to one another and into their lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you notice in the psalm, the very next sections is not good news. Yeah, right. <laughs> right? They're uh, in distress. Uh, they're surrounded by, by enemies. Uh, but they built this foundation of speaking who God is and how he relates to us so that when they are in these bad situations, they remember who God is. Yeah, that's right. And how he relates uh, to them. So for our daily lives, it's to speak that truth like every morning. Yeah. Speak that refrain over yourself yeah. of who God is and how he relates to you. It's in his steadfast love. And then when you come to those difficult areas of life, whatever your distress is, however you feel surrounded or overwhelmed, you go back to the refrain, yeah, that's right. right? Over this situation, over this difficulty, over this circumstance, this broken down relationship, his steadfast love yeah. endures forever. It's your base. It's your foundation. It's a rock it's of solid. refuge. Yeah. Yeah, it's solid. It'll yeah. give you a peace that surpasses understanding and, and perseverance to keep going. And, uh, you know, not immediately, but down the road, you can look back and you can see his steadfast love and how he carried you through those difficult situations, which is what, like, the psalm does. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. That's fantastic. That's beautiful. And uh, one of the things we're going to do during the next nine weeks is uh, for each of the psalms we'll be diving into, uh, I'll ask the, the whoever I'm interviewing to uh, pick a verse or a, a small number of verses to pray over and kind of pray us out. And what I challenge you to do as viewers is, again, in the theme of practice makes perfect, yeah. uh, is to take whatever psalm we covered during the sermon and just pick. You can model what, what the pastor will, will pray over. That's perfectly fine. Um, but if you're led to pick another set of verses that you want to pray mm. over throughout the week, however it applies to your life, um, those are powerful. Prayer is powerful in and of itself, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. those are powerful ways for you to connect with the psalm. So we'll do that um, each and every week. And, and this week, I'd like you to pray us out with uh, one or two verses that you've chosen from 118. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful that we get to call you Father, and you are a God and a Father of steadfast love. That's who you are, and that's how you relate to us. And so I just want to cling to your precious and powerful word, especially that opening verse, that we give thanks to you 
for you are good and your steadfast love endures forever. And for my brothers and sisters, uh, Father, I know there's so much that weighs heavy on their heart and mind. And so wherever there's heaviness, Father, I pray and sing that refrain that you are good and your steadfast love endures forever. Uh, wherever there is uh, brokenness or guilt or shame in us, Father, let the refrain be sung over, over that, that your steadfast love endures forever and there is forgiveness and grace and healing. Uh, wherever there is mountaintop experiences, wherever you have shown your goodness and your faithfulness, Father, we give thanks to you for your good and even there your steadfast love, it endures forever. So Father, for my uh, brothers and sisters, the ones you love so much uh, over their mountaintops, over their valleys, over their difficulties, their trials, uh, Father, let this be the refrain that your steadfast love endures forever. I pray you build that foundation, that base, that rock, that place of refuge in each one of us. And I ask this in the most precious and powerful name, in the one whose steadfast love that is embodied for us, uh, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. We'll see you again in a few weeks. Actually, we'll see you again in a few minutes. <laughs> but for you guys, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we hope this summer is just full of blessings for you. And uh, we just want to be a compliment to your faith life. Uh, as we dive into a new psalm each and every week, pray you're able to join us and uh, take care. We'll see you again. Have a blessed week in the Lord. See you next time on Takeaway. Peace. <laughs>